Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, we're taking another look at the Yaesu FT4X. And I have talked about this radio before. Um, when I did, it was in direct comparison to its bigger brother, the FT65. And the reason I did that comparison is pretty obvious. I mean, they both look very similar to each other. They're both, both fairly close together in terms of price, so it's an obvious question to ask of the two, is one better than the other? And in my experience and in my personal opinion, the FT65 is in fact better, and for a couple of reasons. The first being the uh, FT65 is IP54 equivalent uh, weather resistant, so sp uh, splash and rain proof. It uh, is also shock resistant. It's a larger radio, so it has a larger factory battery, but you also have the extended battery option. The display, is a little bit different, uh, a little more evolved, and is able to display more characters on the display. The front panel programming area, you have a bit more real estate there. In fact, you've even got a couple of extra um, programmable function buttons on there. So across the board, if I'm going to recommend one radio over the other, I'm going to recommend the FT65 pretty much every time. That is not to say, however, that the FT4X is not a decent little radio, because it is. It's not as good as the 65, but it's a pretty damn good radio. So if you own one of these, you've got a decent radio. If someone's considering buying one of these, you're buying a decent little radio. But what I wanted to talk about today is how I use the FT4X, and it kind of goes into, uh, and it's a decent lead into a new project direction that I'm going in, and it's a sort of a different little concept in terms of uh, uh, a new way to de deploy and operate radio in the in the tactical spectrum. Uh, and it's borrowed very directly from the military and law enforcement asymmetrical warfare community. So, uh, and it's based uh, around little bitty radios set up like this. So I'll get into that towards the end. But let me talk about how I use the FT4X. The FT4X is for me um, very similar to the way in which I employ a little snub nose revolver. If I'm just stepping out and uh, going to the end of the street or gonna go check the mail, or if I'm going into an environment where it's very critical to me that I don't print or people don't discover that I'm armed, and to be completely honest with you, that could be something, something as innocuous as going to a family Christmas party. I normally carry a three inch GP100 357 Magnum outside waistband carry concealed under a garment. But if I go to a Christmas party, I'm going to get hugged by aunts, uncles, parents, on and on it goes. And the last thing I, I want is them feeling me up and realizing I got a big old gun on my waist. It's not really called for at a Christmas party, but I do, uh, since I'm going to be traveling through town to get there, I'd like to be armed. Um, and you know, it's, it's just one of those things. If you, you know, if you have used guns a lot throughout your life, you're a concealed carry person, you get used to always being armed. The, so the snub nose revolver kind of allows me, uh, well, I'll just put it this way. This is a gun I carry when I can't carry a gun. Um, in terms of how it's professionally used, these have been used and I've used them in the past for, um, deep cover situations where, uh, you don't want to have a firearm discovered on you at all. There's any number of reasons why there's an interest in the J-frame. It does not necessarily mean this is the best handgun to carry. In fact, they're very difficult to shoot, they're very difficult to handle, uh, and they're very compromised. Much the same as this little antenna on this little snub nose radio is also fairly compromised. Um, it's, it's a compromise you make in order to gain maximum concealment and portability. Now, how do I use this radio in that same format? Well, there are a lot of occasions and a lot of situations I go to where I'm not necessarily going to do radio work, but I like to have a radio on me. I like to have a radio on me everywhere I go all the time, even when I go to family events, barbecues, parties, etc. And what this radio allows me to do, because it is so compact, with that belt clip gone and with this little short Comet uh, SMA209 antenna, which is very, very flexible. I can throw this into a cargo pocket, and I've got a little radio that I can pop out, and I can use it for uh, one purpose that I use it a lot for, and I do this quite a lot with all of my radio gears and monitor public safety frequencies. So if I'm out and about, 
and I hear sirens or I hear some kind of police activity or something, I can crank that up, get pertinent information, determine if it's an area I want to avoid or if it's something I need to be concerned about, and then go about my business. I can also use this because we have, uh, well, right now it's not so great because we've uh, got a, a malfunction on our system, but we have a really good repeater system normally uh, with our club and we have a voter system so that allows me to have great access to the repeater even with a very compromised antenna like this so i can actually open my repeater from a lot of locations here in town uh, i can but mainly this is used for monitoring and despite the fact that it's a short antenna the receive is actually pretty good on the stuff i'm trying to listen to i'm not looking for weak signals and i'm not experimenting all of the stuff I'm listening to, whether it's a local PD or SO, my local repeater, um, they all come through pretty good and I'm able to pick them up with this antenna. So it's a neat little compact package that I find it in, incredibly handy and I find myself using this radio almost as much as I use any other HT I have in my collection. Uh, in fact, I, I like to take it to radio club events and throw it up on the table. Um, yeah, just as a just as a kind of thumb my nose a little bit, uh, but yeah, I, I like it. It's a it's a neat little package. Now, how this relates to tactical radio stuff again? This is this is for everybody. This is for ham radio guys all over the world. But if you have an interest in tactical communications, we all kind of know that that means different things, di different ways of deploying radio. How could a radio like this be useful? Well. As if you have a situation going on in your town, particularly if you're dealing with what we were dealing with a couple of years ago, where you had a lot of demonstration activity, you had a lot of stuff going on that was uh, something to be concerned about. We had a little bit of that even in our very conservative little community here. And there were a few events that I, I went to and kind of hung out on the periphery just to kind of see what's going on, to see if it's something I need to be concerned about. And in doing so, um, I follow principles I learned long ago of camouflage. And uh, you want to camouflage your movement, you want to camouflage yourself, you want to cat. And what I'm talking about here, I'm not talking about anything that's multicam or woodland or tiger stripe. When you're talking this kind of stuff, you're talking kind of getting on the edge of the way asymmetrical warfare operations are done or asymmetrical operations. And asymmetrical warfare is basically just a fancy way of saying guerrilla warfare or counter guerrilla warfare, depending on which flag you're holding, determines which side of the equation you're on. Um, but in those cases, camouflage there, like I said, doesn't mean multicam. What it means is you need to blend in with the environment that you're moving through. If that environment is wearing, um, you know, shorts and tennis shoes and t-shirts and funny little hats and whatnot, you're going to need to look the same. You're going to need to blend. Otherwise, you're going to stand out. And in that, in that way, if you're walking around with a radio with a whip antenna on, or if you're one of these people that likes to show up at these events in full battle rattle with plate carriers and helmets and all that, that is the opposite of concealment. Now you're drawing attention to yourself. And when you begin to draw attention to yourself, you begin to draw problems to yourself. The whole idea here is just kind of slip around, see if there's anything you need to pay attention to, and then slide out and bounce. So if I'm going to be doing that, we're talking concealment. Um, now, where this kind of comes from is my company, and I'm, I'm the head research design and, or research and development and design guy for the company. I've been deeply involved in the world of asymmetrical warfare gear for a couple of years now. And in fact, if you look at our, our catalog, we've got a lot of stuff in there um, for, that allows you to carry things like 30-round AR mags concealed under a garment, shotgun shells, uh, OC spray, you name it, all carried on a regular rigger's belt and worn in such a fashion that you can blend in and conceal just like you would conceal a handgun. Now, if it's, um, you know, if it's the good guys, the, the undercover good guys, whether they're cops or, or you know, at the state, county, or, or federal level, or they might even be military guys, they might even have a long gun in a bag or, or some kind of way to tote a, a, a very short personal defense weapon, and then they're going to have those mags on their body. But amongst all that other gear that they have, they also have radios. And our belt-mounted radio pouches fill that role and were designed specifically for that kind of stuff. So a little radio like this tucked into a little pouch with a covert 
um, earpiece kind of setup is sort of the order of the day there. Now, there's a couple of ways of going about this, and I guess the first question is, could you, pre could you put the FT4X in on that roll? You probably could. I would use probably a more advanced radio and for a couple of reasons. One of the things that I would immediately be concerned about is in order to change the channels on this radio, it needs to be pulled out of the pouch and you have to use the up-down arrow. That's a problem because now people are going to see you reaching under a garment. They're going to see you pulling out a radio and adjusting channels. That's problematic. However, if I were to take something like a VX6, which oddly enough is about the same size as an FT4X, just a little bit wider. Now I've got top-mounted volume and channel control knobs. I got a top port for that covert earpiece setup, and you're pretty much good to go. All I would need is a little stubby antenna, and I have one on the way. I've got a, one of those little diamond bullet antennas coming in, and when it does, I'll, I'll show that, and I'll show the setup as to how I'm going to be running that. Um, but that would be a good way. Now, the only thing I have left to solve is how am I going to monitor this traffic and communicate? And that's going to mean some kind of a, a headset unit that has a built-in push to talk and some kind of an earpiece. Something I would suggest you avoid, because again, if you're trying to blend in and be that gray man, and you start walking around with one of these Secret Service Agent Smith coiled audio ear tubes behind your ear, you might as well be wearing a full-on multi-cam plate carrier and helmet because that is going to alert a lot of people to you. They're going to be questioning this, uh, especially after the Matrix movies, this really got people uh, associating this look with uh, some sinister stuff. Of course, Secret Service and, and law enforcement agencies use these, but... Um, that's the idea. Secret Service and law enforcement and people that are there for or not necessarily um, non-nefarious reasons are going to be running stuff like this. You're not going to want to do that. Instead, if you're going to have earpieces, maybe you need something like this. Now, this hasn't been modified yet, but this is just a generic set of Skull Candy earbuds. But if you had a couple of these tucked in your ear, um, People be none the wiser. You just look like another dork listening to music on his iPhone. So what I'm going to be doing is getting, uh, I have one of those covert uh, setups for the VX6 coming that has a little push to talk that's a larger version of this one here, which is for the phone. And then I'm probably going to rewire the earbud on that to something like that. And I may just end up going with this side is a or rather the other one go with this is just a dummy or if I can tie both of them in and get them into each ear, that's fine too. I'll have to figure that out once I get it in and look at the wiring. But when I get that project done, I'll put it all together and I'll do a video on it. But I guess the upshot on this is, this is kind of a two part video for just, you know, regular ham operations where you just want to have a radio around when you're not necessarily doing radios. A little shorty like this I'll set up as a little snub nose radio is awesome. Little pocket carry radio, everybody should have something like that. And you can do the same thing, of course, with just a, if you got an extra UV5R in your collection. Get one of these little Comet SMA 209 antennas, throw it on here, and toss this sucker in your pocket, you're good to go. Um, of course, take the belt clip off. You don't need that extra bulk because it's going to be going in a cargo pocket. Um, however... As far as the tactical side of things, just as important as having, um, you know, a, a, a decent radio on your plate carrier that's tied into, you know, your active ear protection, or you might even have something like a Peltor Comtac or, or one of the auto equivalents or whatnot. Um, just as important with all that gear is to have something also to operate in that undercover good guy mode. Uh, you need some low profile stuff just as importantly in fact, maybe more importantly, then you need all of that battle rattle stuff as well. So this will be kind of an ongoing project, and I'll be setting up different radios kind of along these lines, and we'll find different interesting ways of, of working with this stuff. In fact, I'm also going to be taking a look at, uh, um, I showed, very briefly, I showed that, uh, that body armor antenna, and I have an idea on this of going with something that's even more slim and compact than this, and focus very specifically on the UHF band so that I can go with a much shorter antenna. And I'm thinking I could come out with something that's only about that long that ties into the top of the radio 
and can actually be clipped to your garment inside or maybe worked within your clothing or your cover garment so that you can eliminate um, having to go with a stubby antenna and actually have a more effective antenna that gives you the full range of capability for the radio. So more on that later. Like I said, ongoing project. I'll go ahead and bring it to a close at this point. But uh, again, welcome to the, the Snub Nose Radio Concept. So with that, have a wonderful day, 73s. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Southwest Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.